Hi everybody, welcome to the first Smooth Accounting podcast uh, with myself, Jerry Williams, and my first guest, Pete Matheson. Hello, thanks Thank for having me. Thank you so much That's for joining me. <laughs> <laughs> this one, I think. Um, Pete, for anybody who doesn't know, uh, Pete is an IT genius, uh, now business coach and YouTube superstar, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> and lots of people are concerned. Um, so so glad to have Pete on on the podcast with me. I actually did a podcast with you um, a couple of years well. ago. Yeah, was it? Would have been on the sofa. So, yeah, obviously <laughs> noted at that point. I was like, I need this favour yeah. repaid <laughs> when I do my own one. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for being here. How are Thanks you? Have me very well. Yeah, well as well as can be being stuck at home. I'm out of the house. This is amazing. <laughs> this is like the first time I've been out of the house for a month or so. So yeah, it's good. I loved your thing this morning where you were like gonna put pants on. I did on. put some trousers on. Pants I've got on, trousers, on, trousers. So yeah, good. all good. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. So we're just gonna have a chat. We're gonna talk a little bit about your journey as a business owner, um, kind of what you did at the start, how you grew your business, you eventually sold a business, and what you're doing now. So cool. let's go back to the start. Let's tell people, tell people a little bit about oh how you started your business. Um, 2011. So it was like the tail end of the last recession. Was it 2008, the last recession, I think? So 2011, I'm we started. I'm too young to remember that. Sorry, I don't know. <laughs> How old are you? I'm joking. Ah, I'm not going to ask I'm you joking. that on camera. I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, um, no one needs to know that, Pete. So tail end of, like, of 2011, we started the, um, the business. Basically, you know, the age-old story, working somewhere, not happy, so you start your own business. Um, so did that, started by myself. Um, only real idea was just to make sure we're doing like great IT support for various people and customers and small businesses. So just, just did that. Grew very organically for the first few years. Didn't really do any of this like social media stuff at all um, when we started. And um, yeah, it was just a, a big old long journey for pretty much the next decade. Um, grew it to 16 staff, um, 1.2 million-ish turnover. We were just, just above that. And um, end of 20, 2019, um, we decided to sell the business, um, which just as timing would happen, it was in March 2020 we sold, and then obviously COVID and everything happened. Wow! So timing was just just spot on perfect timing for me. Obviously. Yes, yeah, <laughs> love that. So when you started your IT business, I know a lot of people ask me this about when I started my accountancy business. Like, did you plan to grow? Did you, you know? And I was like, no. Like, I just wanted to pay my bills. What about you? Was it was that your intention or were you literally just like don't like my job want to start a business kind of have what were you, what was your thinking then? it was um yeah very much i had no asp- no no aspirations to like we're going to get to like x number of staff like or anything like that all, all i wanted to do was to work for myself earn enough money to like pay the bills and then that was kind of it um anything like beyond that was like a distant pipe dream of like oh that'd be amazing they'd be so so cool if we could do that but that's not, probably not going to happen so let's not worry about it yeah um and it just it just kind of happens and, and like you say there's no no planning no. like just winging it yeah <laughs> i'm very, very big on just <laughs> winging it i think every business owner that's running like the one business is winging it maybe once you've done it a few times and um you know you you get like a, a formula or you know what you're doing you know how you're going to structure things but yeah no, most people haven't got a clue like even even up to the point when i was selling the business Still had no clue what I was doing. Yeah, but I think I think we get better at winging it. Yeah, like I always say, I'm winging it, and people go, "Well, you, you're not really 100 yeah. percent winging it." Like, okay, well, there's some things I'm better at now. Yeah, but there's always things that crop up every day. Crop up every day where I'm like, uh, there's also things that cock up every day. There's but, definitely hey. cock ups. That that <laughs> happens. Yeah, always. Um, I will just say for anybody watching, any questions at all you've got for Pete please do just pop them in the comments um, and we'll do our best um, to to go through a little Q&A um, towards the end. That'd be great. Um, cool. So when did you get your first employee and what was that and why and how did that happen? First employee was maybe a year in and that was just, we'd won a, a few good customers. And that's the nice thing about IT is it's like, it's all contracts. So right. you win a customer, they pay a monthly fee, they're with you for at least probably a year or so. So then you do that a few more times, then you get a member of staff, and then you take more customers and more staff, and it just, it just, it was quite, it wasn't easy, but yeah. it's an easy way to build a business because yeah. it's just all based on monthly recurring revenue. That's like whenever I spoke to Same. like an accountant, <laughs> um, every service I wanted to pay for was just I want to pay per month, yeah, and that's it. So I can I can you know finance everything. Um, I know my incomings and outgoings on a monthly basis, and I can know if I've actually got enough money to then pay for another monthly cost of member of staff and yeah. software and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, it's it's so much easier for that 
type of business mm. you know I always think about being an accountant I'm like it's more of a modern accountant that does do the, the monthly <laughs> billing but unlike kind of solicitors for example which quite often will have like just piecework and, and they don't that if if they are a customer, they then got to replace that customer, and then yeah. they've got to I'm try seeing a really lot of that change now. I'm seeing so, solicitors come up with the whole monthly, like, like monthly pay plans. us a monthly fee, and we'll do yeah. everything or export ex- you. Yeah, it's but yeah, it's so definitely. Much better. If if everything could be monthly, that would make things a lot easier. Which I mean, everything's monthly, monthly now. Only monthly, yeah. Some <laughs> clients, actually, potentially clients we speak to, will say, um, "I can't. Can I just pay at the end of the year, or can I just pay it even up front for the whole year?" And I go, "No." Like it literally yeah. is. This is this is what we do, yeah. <laughs> and it's that or nothing. Because well, then you've got to remember in the year's time to like go and collect the payment oh, or chase yeah. it or whatever. Whereas if it's monthly, it's just happens every it month. Just recurs. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So it was a year in. Yeah. Got your first employee. Yeah. What what level? What did you go for? Was it admin? Uh, was it IT? It's, it's a bit of a different. So um, it was actually a director level. So I had someone else that was planning to join the business with me and run, run the business together. Uh, okay. Um, Actually, what happened is they joined for a, a year and then left a year later because we didn't agree on something. <laughs> right, okay. But so then that's the, all part so of... The first actual employee... Yes. Oh, what was the first actual employee? Um, was a an engineer from another IT company that I previously worked at. He wasn't happy and I managed to persuade him over. Um, recruitment is one of the most difficult things when you start in a business. Absolutely, like trying to find good people that you can know and trust will do the right job. And I always... My, my like go-to isn't to poach... And that's a very bad way of saying it. But if you can find people you've previously worked with who aren't happy and are going to leave their jobs anyway, yes. then uh, and you know them, you know what they're capable of, maybe they aren't an exact fit for what you need, yeah. but actually it's a much smaller challenge to get that person, you know what they are capable of and let yeah. them do that, than it is to find someone that you don't know, you don't know anything about them, what they're capable of, and you just kind of throw them in, then you've got to train them and all that kind of stuff. That's a more way more work than just finding someone that you might have to pigeonhole into. I know what they're capable of. And actually, like that, the first hire we made undoubtedly one of the best because he, really? he, he skilled up so quickly he learned all the stuff that, that we had gaps in the business yeah like by far I was you know i regarded him and still regard him as one of like the best uh be- that's sound bad about the other stuff but i'm sure none of them are listening don't worry if he is fine um no i know what you mean though recruitment i just it's a nightmare, like isn't it? i literally just cry a bit inside every time i know that i need to recruit. recruitment agencies at all do i yeah um so i did once a few years ago got stung really badly horrendous person joined left after two weeks um the whole process was an absolute nightmare i would use recruitment agents i haven't had to with yeah. my whole team because i've always been able to put it out on social media and people have applied directly or and i you know i'm kind of not necessarily recruiting for a position at any one time i'm like yeah. anyone that's amazing get in touch if you're amazing i'll find a job for you like and i'll, I'll recruit you I'll, and that's kind of what i've been doing um and the team i've got now are incredible and also you know tapping them up as well like who do you know come mm. on guys like you've all worked in practice like who do you know who's good <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> who do you know who's good who might be looking who might be unhappy who's gonna leave anyway yeah. um you know and um and they're great and they'll always sort of say oh i know this person or you know some so and so's looking or whatever so i i would use a recruitment agent um but i i, I think these like specialist skills to look for to use a recruitment agent because they can go and drill in and go find that specific skill exactly yeah but if you kind of want a bit of a general knows a lot about a lot or a list about a lot or whatever it is yeah then yeah just recruit direct and, and actually didn't... your social media stuff is fantastic because yeah. like leading on to that a little bit so the youtube i put out a youtube video that was just what our staff get for working here like there was nothing special i didn't think there was anything special it was just like they get paid on time <laughs> yeah they get a few free drinks like nothing yeah. like really that made you go wow that's amazing yeah. but then so many people commented on it and we started receiving CVs and stuff. Like I, I, I think I was, I was abroad at the time, and we were getting like tens of CVs at some days. Wow. Um, which is just like unheard of normally. No, it is. Um, all just saying like, saw the video, absolutely love it. Would love to come work for you. We didn't have any jobs going. I just thought it'd be quite nice to make a video about, you know, just showing kind of a bit about what? the staff and oh, what, what they get. Oh, that's such a good idea. But um, yeah, growing like the whole social media following, like the YouTube channel and stuff, just that kind of helps recruitment so much more. You don't expect yeah. it to. No. But it just does. You don't. And and people recruitment agents take offense when i'm like i don't like i'll put an ad out uh, i will say like we're looking for someone no recruiters and they, they always like, oh yeah and i'm like they it's still I'm, contact you yeah they, they still do they still do and I'm, website, yeah contact yeah me. but it doesn't leave me alone <laughs> yeah and and the thing is i'm like but i i want to exhaust my own yeah. kind of reach and stuff first and also people that have been following me because if they've been following me they know what we're like as a firm and there's more chance they're going to fit in with that firm if they've seen us and they want to apply yeah 
So I'm not getting too recruitment agents. I certainly would if I needed to. And potentially the bigger we get, that might be more of a thing. But then maybe the bigger we get, the less chance. I don't know. I don't know. Recruitment just, it stresses me out. So if you're a recruitment agency, maybe yeah. get in touch with Jerry, but <laughs> yeah. maybe not. But, but kind of do, but don't. Don't annoy me because you get blocked. <laughs> um, yeah, um, it's, it's just a tough one. But yeah, I would agree with you that recruitment is one of the hardest things mm. about growing and having your own business um you know the moment i look at my team and think they're so amazing and then i'm like i just want to preserve that amazingness <laughs> forevermore like do you know yeah. what i mean so so you went up to 16 staff yeah so we've got 13 at the moment well me plus 12 so 13 of us so obviously that that's bigger and i and i think like even now i feel like oh god that's quite a lot of them like mm, yeah how do you manage 16 people wing it again <laughs> like what do you do today, really. come on give these listeners um, some, uh, oh, some little uh, glimpse there, of, there were certain things know. we were trying to do um certainly later on in the, the journey of like trying to build that management team and structure and that's something i wish i did earlier on i think is just have those like hey this is like the i mean you might be, be the only person that's in like account management or finance but hey they're in charge of it because they're the only person right, um yeah, yeah, yeah. but bring those people in and have like the regular like weekly or monthly meetings or yeah. or just something so that even then all the other staff see it's a management meeting right. there's a management team and then um you find the other staff then go to the group of the team instead of just coming to you directly um that i it was helping towards the end and i yeah, again i wish we'd just done it like way even if you're like on your own when you take on your first few staff you go okay we're going to build you as part of the management team because what you get is you get to a certain size and then you try and build that management team and then people that have been there like say longest might then expect to be in the management team when you're like yeah but you're not quite you wouldn't quite fit yeah. and then you have to go through that whole difficulty of trying to explain it and be like yeah but i know he's only been here two months but actually he's you know brought in to be that that position that role it's that's yeah. a very difficult thing to deal with yeah I, I agree i think like and it probably applies to loads of things we've done that we wish we'd done sooner um but like when you finally do it and you go oh this is amazing like yeah. at the moment the structure is working really really well within my team and it has been for, for months now. And I'm like, oh, I should have done that such a long time ago. Like, you know, I don't really speak to the team that often anymore. I speak to the client managers. They very much deal with, you know, the team and the day-to-day -day stuff. And I, it used to be me. I used to talk to all of them every single day. And now I'm like, I don't really talk to anyone. Like, mm. I don't, no one needs me anymore. Like, and I'm clients just, as well. That's yeah. the, the difficult I mean, one I that, have. Because yeah. obviously you start up, you deal with clients all the time. Yeah. And then you start kind of moving away from that because you have staff to deal with clients. Yeah. But then you always feel like I'm, I'm missing out. Like... I'm yeah. not talking to them. They've, they've kind of bought me, not my staff. Yeah. And that's, that, that's, that's actually what led me on to doing lots of the social media stuff and the newsletters and videos. Because I'm like, well, if I can't physically talk to them and see them all the time, yeah. and if I can put out the video content, then at least they, they get FaceTime. I don't yes. see them, but at least they get to learn. Yeah, that's true, actually. And that that is a little bit the same with me with all the social media stuff. Like, I'm still interacting with people. Mm. I'm interacting with existing clients, potential clients, the general public, you know, all the time. So I'm still, yeah. like, the face of the business. So that does make sense what you're saying. Um, I think but you have got to delegate and you have yeah. you know again i wish i'd done that sooner i wish i'd just gone oh i don't i don't need to be doing those things like why am yeah. i doing it i've got a, a, a pa va oh it's yeah. a va but it's, oh, it's basically a pa i've got yeah. a, a va this time around and that's something i'd never ever would have considered in my last business oh, I love and it. like the first thing i've done this time around is going let's get a va because they yeah. can just organize calendar like everything yeah, everything so amazing i did that first and i am so glad yeah. i did that first um yeah it's brilliant so so let's kind of whiz forward a bit then so growing the business got to your 16 staff at what point i mean did you stay at 16 for a long time or was it like grow 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 grow, grow sell uh so so we never planned to sell no ever in fact i put a video out saying what makes us different we're never gonna sell <laughs> stupid video to make um which i might have taken offline i might put it back up again i don't know but Put it back yeah, up just for the lols. We, we never planned to sell, and um, uh, we, we, we the, the 16 was just like continual growth, and yeah, we would have been pro pro possibly on that. Obviously, COVID hit and everything happened there, but yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we just continued to grow, and then basically we, we hit the end of like 2019, and we were just thinking, yeah, what what are we trying to do here? Are we gonna are we gonna keep on doing this for the next like two decades until we're like traditional retirement age? Yeah. Um, and we were just thinking, well, hey, we don't want to do this. Just you know, we don't want this to be us for the next like. 20 years or whatever it is yeah so let's just think about what we do next and um you know we had a good 10 years essentially of everything going on you know on the up and up and yeah you have your challenges and there's a like <laughs> days and are we allowed to swear on this um yeah are we <laughs> there's really <laughs> days and yeah. really good days you can cut it out if i'm not on the live no. um <laughs> there are really good days and really good bad days uh really bad days but um generally over the 10 years it was like just a consistent we're going up and up and up 
So we're like, okay, we're, we're at kind of the, the, not necessarily the peak, but we're at the top of our game. Yes. If there's a good time to sell, now would be a great time because Always. we started at the end of a recession. Yeah. We haven't had a recession. Maybe one might happen. Maybe. And then <laughs> something else happened, which you just, I mean, you couldn't have predicted that at all. No, um, you definitely couldn't have but, predicted um, COVID. But we, we just then went through the process and um, you never know how much your company's worth until you actually go and try and sell it. So that's what we did. Oh, we were yes. like, well, now, what's what's the number? Everyone's got the number. I, yeah. I think I just saw you put something like ten million, wasn't it? On yeah, well, I'm just joking. Yeah, because I get it all um, the time. Like, oh, you sell it, and I go, well, yeah. What, what are you going to give me? <laughs> so we, we just sat down and said, like, what's our number? Because um, again, we've always got like, there's no number. We're never going to sell, but we're like, okay, what's the number? Like, pay off the mortgage. Like, do a few fun things. Like, whatever it is. How many years do you want to survive off of whatever yeah. you whatever you earn? Yeah. And um, we came up with a number, and then we're like, okay, what do we do next? Well, we need to find if someone's going to pay that number. Yeah. Or, or more or less or whatever it is. Yeah. So we effectively went to market. We found an outsourced FD who could come in and run some figures for us. Mm-hmm. Um, he'd been through it before, so he knows how to like sell an IT business thing. So yeah. got a few offers. All of the offers were higher than the number we had. Wow. So we're like, okay, I guess we're selling the business we're selling. then. selling, yeah, we're doing it. Right, okay. So we went through the process, uh, super easy in a way. Um, everyone tells you how difficult it is to sell a business. They're gonna tear your legals apart, tear your finances apart. Like, nah. They're gonna rip it apart. And for me, it was just like, we just had a folder full of information, hand it over. And like two months later, we were done. Yeah. Super easy. I think that would depend on, and, and having dealt with businesses, you know, mm. dealt with acquisitions and disposals and mergers and things like that on the from the accountant's perspective, it definitely pe- depends on the team you've got and, and, and the business set up. And I know from you, like, you know, you were on zero and everything was perfect and neat and tidy and, you know, mm. you were, you made it that way. And I think there's, I see it all the time where I'm like, you know, oh, we want to buy this business. You know, one of our clients will go, oh, I, I want to buy this business. And I go, right, okay. Can I see the last three years accounts? Can I see the current management account information? Can I see this? Can I see that? And they're like, they don't have that, <laughs> but they think it's worth this much money. And I'm like, oh, no, it isn't. Yeah. Like, and, and, you know, it's it, it's just the whole like- dragon's dead. Oh, we're gonna, we're gonna be yeah, like worth yeah. a million pounds next year. So yeah. it's, we're worth two million now? Yeah. No. <laughs> just no. <laughs> yeah it's so true honestly like the amount of times i've seen it or someone will go like they'll slide the accounts over to me when pre-covid when i can look at them face to face and i'll be like okay so these are the 2019 figures like where's 2020 like well they haven't done those yet and i'm mm. like right i'm not even having this conversation like i'm literally <laughs> not interested in 2019 i'm interested in like what happened last three months yeah like and then things like that and i think if you're you know, obviously I'm an accountant. If I was going to sell my business, everything would be like perfect. And I'd be like, there you go, pre-packaged. But companies need to realize that you, you need to package your business up to be able to sell it you, to get the most and to be able to sell it for a decent amount of money. You need yeah. to be able to like package it up beautifully and go, here's everything. You know, anything you pers- you, you want to look at is there. And that's and kind that's of what we had our FD do. So our did. FD put yeah. this like pack together. Perfect. There was like, there was two of them. There's like the anonymous pack of like, here's some high level stuff that yeah. you don't know who it is or anything, but have a look at the figures and see if you're interested. Yeah. And then there was the, hey, here's all the gump. Let's actually get a figure out of you and yeah. see what you, what, you, what you think. Yeah. Um, that was, yeah, fantastic. Cause you just hand it over and yeah. just wait. So anyone thinking of uh, selling their business, <laughs> get <laughs> get some good figures, like get everything perfect and, and it'll be loads easier. I think it helped for us cause we were quite young. I mean, we were like, you know, almost a decade old so yeah. we were still relatively small whereas a business that's been going for like 20 30 years you've got a lot more history and like files to find insurance certificates and like all those kind of things you have to like drag out and like hand over um, yeah but do difficult. you though because even if you've been going for 20 30 years you still have it the now last years renew on those yeah. yeah yeah, yeah you yeah, should true. still have it now like everything sort of digital yeah be easily my like deirdre that like looks after it in their <laughs> drawer somewhere i'll be like come on deirdre <laughs> <laughs> we need to sell this business what are you doing <laughs> um cool so that was all very exciting and so you sold your business amazing and then and i know from chats you and i have had like it massively takes the pressure off and you're sort of a bit like oh you don't yes. have to do anything <laughs> that feeling <laughs> amazing which you're yet to um, feel i guess yeah. <laughs> well yeah yeah i don't know what that is um and so what i know i know it's been a bit organic really what you did with the starting on the coaching and the youtubing and the yeah. kind of thing but explain to everybody watching kind of the journey you've been on since you sold your business and where you're at now so sold the business yep uh and then a few people started contacting me saying hey i've noticed you've sold the business love what you did can you now do that to my business too mm. and i kind of went uh, yeah that sounds kind of cool like yeah. all the fun stuff like strategy and yeah. marketing and yeah. how to structure it all like awesome love doing all that stuff yep none of the stress no staff no customers legals finances like all the stuff that kind of keeps the 
wheel ticking and turning and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I started working with a few. I never never planned on doing it. Just kind of started working with a couple because it was it was quite fun, um, and really really enjoyed it. Yeah. And then it was end of last year. I thought, hey, let's let's see if there's like something something to this. Um, put a couple of posts on LinkedIn. Just say, hey, I'm you know used to run an IT company, sold it, built it, blah blah blah, all the, the whole story. If you want to work with me, then then cool, drop me a message. Literally two posts on LinkedIn, twenty five people booked wow. phone calls off the back of that. And going from someone who's been selling IT, where it's like a back and forth, like here's the contract, no, what about this contract and this yeah. cost, and yeah, we yeah. could do that instead. And it's a really long process. To like, I was on the phone with someone and said, I don't care about how much it is, just just sign me up. Like, wow. Okay. What do I do next? <laughs> I'm not used to that at all. So that was really really um nice thing to That's amazing, deal with. Yeah. Um, and all that had happened because if we get onto it eventually, we'll be the, like the video marketing stuff. So we started doing video marketing with the last business, the IT business. Um, because no one else was really doing it. I mean, you're killing it on video marketing, obviously. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and just we thought, well, if we can try and do that, no one else is really doing it. Let's do it at a really good like level, like get all decent lights and cameras and like yeah. just do it really, really well. Because that's going to put us above all the people that aren't yet doing that. Yeah. And no one was. And, and like you search around, there was some businesses would have like five subscribers on YouTube. So, mm-hmm. well, that's a really good like low bar for me to hit. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my mum, my sister. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. <it's> great. <laughs> so we, we went for that and we, we started doing the video marketing, obviously built an audience. And then as part of that, it's building an audience for your customers and your prospects because they're all like following going, oh, that's really interesting. Love how they do that. That's really yeah. cool. But then also there's other, and you have that probably other accountants will follow you and yeah. other IT companies follow me. And so it was those that then already knew about me. So when I posted that, I already had the audience. So it's like, hey, he's just posted saying he's going to do something. Yeah, I'd love to work with him. So yeah. that was like a like a hack, shortcut kind of thing. I didn't have to like build an audience from scratch. No. I already had it. You had it there. Um, and then just off the back of that, so now I've, I've literally fully booked my Thursdays. It's back-to-back phone calls every single Thursday. Um, so in terms of the coaching then, is that just we will have a phone call with you once a week, once a month. Like how do you, what do you do? So I've done it, um, you get like a guaranteed one hour like video call every other week. Cause I think weekly was just too, it was too much trying yeah. to stay on top of people. Yeah, of course. Um, and so what, a guaranteed kind of call every other week just so we can sit down and go, okay, what's the strategy? Mm-hmm. There's, a, there's a couple of ways I play it. It's, I've got my own structure of like, let's look at implementing these things cause mm-hmm. these will, will help you and build you and grow you and structure and all that kind of stuff. And there's the, oh, hey, just tell me about what's going on. Like, yes. If you've got problems, yeah. then let's talk about fixing it. Yeah, sure. And I don't know how to fix all of them. It's no. just a, let's talk about it and see if we can figure it out. Yeah. My whole approach is, I will like, the whole, all the calls are like, I will pretend like you're my business. Like, how would I deal with it? Yeah. We can chat. And it's just someone to bounce ideas off of. Like, some yeah. of my clients um, run the business by themselves. They don't have anyone to bounce ideas no. off of. They go home, the husbands, the wives, like they're not interested in talking about business. <laughs> so they literally have nobody, it's just them and everything lies on them. Yeah. So it's it's nice to have someone that's already been there and done it that can you can bounce ideas off of. And that was one of my, my pet peeves was like not saying a bad thing about them, but like action coaches. There's a lot of action coaches around here and around the country. Yeah. Most of them haven't actually run the business themselves. They've no. kind of bought into the, the action coach program, been done the training. And they'll be going like charging fifteen hundred pounds a month or yeah. like two grand a month. And there's yeah. people that charge like three grand a month. Well, I'm, how can you charge three grand a month when you've never when you've never even, even done, done it. there and been there and yeah. done it? Because you know stuff we touch on, yes, but we touch on marketing and sales. But we also have discussion about you know how do you deal with those difficult customers and yeah. um, the difficult cust- the staff and all the stuff that you how do you look after your staff and yeah. treat them? All, you just don't get all that from like just a coach coach Mm-mm. kind of thing. And I hate the word coach, and that's why I hate the word coach. But um, it's so just what someone... do we call you? You're not a coach, why are you? <laughs> so uh, I've literally, I actually registered two businesses, one Pete Matheson and one that's called Not A Business Coach. Uh, I love um, that. I haven't done anything with Not A Business Coach. I'm just going with Pete Matheson, Not A Business Coach. Just, I, just, I just hate the name. I hate like, I everything comes with it. But, so, um, I mean, I, I couldn't agree more. Like I work with a coach. I've been working with him for about a year. Um, and he, you know, he has his own accountancy practice, which he's had for a very long time. He, it's a very successful practice. Um, and it's amazing, like the difference it has made to my business. Everything you've just said, you know, I am on my own, really. Yeah. You know, and it's quite lonely. Like I, horrible, you know, you it? think people think because you've got a team of people that it's not lonely. And I'm like, and I'm on social media every day, so how can it be lonely? But I'm like, it's so lonely. I have no one to like bounce ideas off of, or if things go wrong and there's problems, and I want someone to, that's been through it to go. You know, like I quite often, Simon, my coach, um, I'm sure he'll see this at some point. I'll, I'll be like, Simon, what do I do about this? Like this has just happened. And he goes. <laughs> Oh, is that the first time that's ever happened? And I go, yeah, he's like, oh, this happens to me all the time. Just do this. And I'm like, oh, thank God. Like, mm-hmm. And it's just so funny how, you know, in your head you can get worked up and then your coach will just, they've been there, done it, bought the t-shirt and they'll just go, you just do this and you go, oh. And it, it's it's, sometimes it's it just helps. that. That's yeah. all you literally need is just someone to talk to about it. It's not even, you know, it's not, 
you know, I don't need Simon to help me with marketing or social media or sales or any of those kind of things. Like it's, it's, it's the random things that you yeah. need to run past someone. So I totally get that. Obviously in IT, it must be exactly the same. You've got all these business owners that go, oh, they're just really looking forward to their phone call with Pete because they can just go offload and go, this happened and this happened. And then you go, well, why don't you try this? I did this in my business, it's really worked. And then they come off the phone call thinking, oh, that's brilliant. I just feel so much better. Like, yeah. And it's so good. So you are, are you full at the moment for coaching spaces? I've, for I've got a couple of spaces. I managed to rearrange my um, Thursday so I can <laughs> fit in some more, basically. Just okay. for a blessing for punishment. But no, 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 because I, I genuinely like really enjoy it. You enjoy it, yeah. Um, and, so I want to try and help out. And that's the whole thing. Like, I wouldn't ever price myself at like £1,500 a month. Um, I say that I might change it in like two months time because yeah, you know me I, I don't know what I'm talking that, about everybody. <laughs> he um, said it <laughs> but you know, I don't need to like and that, that's the obviously I've got flexibility now because I've sold the business I don't have to go and earn like a massive income because obviously that's paid for a lot of like the house course, and the, the yeah. running stuff um, I'm just more and again it kind of goes back to what I started the last business I just want to help people yes. and and that yeah. kind of is the fundamental of like even the coaching because with the IT I, I love fixing things yes. and this is just a different version of fixing things yeah I just I just love doing that so um so I don't charge much I've got a couple of spaces and then I basically got my Thursdays um, solely for that and then the other time is kind of like flittering between the YouTube stuff and then this kind of video marketing -y thing agency stuff that I'm yes. just about starting at the yes. moment so we're going to get on to the the YouTube -y and the video -y stuff in a sec <laughs> so just then on the coaching so Pete has a couple of spaces left, any IT business owners out there. Um, but um, I know Pete and I've known him for a long time and I would, I, you know, I'd Absolutely wanna... clueless. I don't <laughs> know what he's talking about. He's winging it. Um, no, <laughs> I'd, I'd love to work with you. You're the type of person that, you know, you're personable and stuff. I mean, I get people asking me all the time if I'll coach them, accountancy owners, all the time. And I'm like, no, I have a coach. <laughs> like, I don't coach. And they're like, oh, you know, can you... I even asked someone the other day, so can you put me on a waiting list for when you start coaching? And I'm like... I couldn't imagine, but I guess mm. maybe I'm just behind you in the journey of that. Do you see what I mean? Like yeah, it's I also a time thing because you're so busy thing. like trying to run and yeah. grow the current business yes. that I couldn't have done that along with the IT business. Too busy, just too, no. too much. No, yeah, so maybe one day I'll start coaching, um, but we'll see. I'll come and ask Pete how to do it first. <laughs> like, what do <laughs> you do? What do you up. do? Wing it. Yeah, we need that on a t-shirt. <laughs> just winging it. Um, cool. So that's great. So Thursdays is coaching, and then the other days. Talk to me about YouTube because I have got a YouTube channel, Smooth Accounting. Please go and subscribe. Um, and I only have like 350 followers, but considering I've been doing videos for such a long time, it was never something I focused on, but I want to focus on it. So I'm going to learn a little bit from you. Um, Pete, yeah. So Pete has his own YouTube channel. Is it just Pete Matheson? It is, yeah. Pete Matheson on YouTube. Amazing YouTube channel. Loads and loads of followers earning money off it doing really really well so i want you to talk to us about youtube so started youtube like three years ago okay for the business purpose of the, the idea of starting it was i want to get more customers for the business right so we're like okay let's just put out some fun content let's talk about techie things like cyber security all that kind of stuff that yeah, yeah, yeah. everyone wants to know or loads about nowadays on on like linkedin and stuff and youtube yeah. so started putting that content out and it's, it's great and it's really good to have that content because it establishes like you know what you're talking about like mm -hmm. obviously you have your really from my point of view being a client of yours as well um how to do your accounts and like r d claims all these things that you're just like oh that's cool i could do that and yeah, yeah, yeah. just kind of gives you those ideas so it's great to have that because it builds like credibility and you know mm -hmm. what you're talking about but the fun stuff is the stuff that actually like attracts people of like how you do things and how you run your business and what the experience is like and and even just really random things in your day of like this is flipping bunny rabbits in your, your yeah. everyone knows about the bunny rabbits the in bunny your rabbits are more offices. famous than me I'm fuming <laughs> <laughs> so it's just it's stuff like that that people like go oh that's really funny like I, yeah really like I, I get that and um it's like a similar interest. Sorry, Luke's just getting naked over there. Yeah, Luke's, um, <laughs> Luke's putting me off. off. <laughs> and, um, and it's just it's stuff that they go, oh yeah, I really like. I, I just get that, and like I I love like watching your videos and all those kind of things. And it's just topics that just resonate with people. Mm. Um, and so we started doing those again, probably very similar to you. We we had like I think we got up to about five hundred, maybe a thousand by the time we sold the business. So within two years of doing it, we so were, I'm not doing too bad. No, no, definitely. And, and also... I'm not putting stuff, that much stuff out on it. I need to... We are going to start putting more. Well, it's, so we. it's different for me because there's, there's two approaches. So for me now, I'm running the YouTube like a business. Right. Whereas before, its goal was to bring clients into the IT company. Right. So actually, 300 subscribers, that could be 300 potential customers. Yes. Oh, there's probably 
parents and family and existing customers mixed in with that. Yes, but, but there's 300 potential customers in there. So actually, yeah. that's a great feed, of, and, and that's kind of the thing you need to focus on. You don't need the views. You just need the quality of those people that are following you to be the right quality. Okay. Whereas now I've kind of switched over where I'm now I'm like, well, I need the numbers now because it's a numbers game with YouTube. You know, yeah. you want to get the views because that gets you, gets you more income. And actually, it's this kind of stupid thing that you can be the best like creator on on YouTube, but have a low subscriber amount. And then when people look at you, they go, oh, you're a small creator. Like, I, I, want, I want to work with larger creators. Like, if you're looking right. for sponsorships or, like, any opportunities to, like, work okay. with people. So um, so now I'm trying to play the numbers game. And actually, I've got a few videos that have, like, taken off. Uh, I had a, it was an Oculus Quest video in November last year that got 50,000 views in, like, two days or something, like, insane. Wow. Um, but it was just full of, like, kids going, oh, my mum's going to buy me one for Christmas. Um, and and I was, it was five reasons not to buy a Quest. So they were going, right. you don't know what you're talking about. This is rubbish. I'm going to get one. It's going to be amazing. So, hey, it's fine. And it got me a load of views and like it paid for the Oculus Quest within the first week, I think, Wow. Um, of that video going, going live. So it's kind of, like I say, it's like a numbers game at that point. And it's just grown from there. And I've got a couple of sponsors now. So I'm doing sponsored videos. I'm also then working with a couple of other um, uh, like IT industry uh, companies to produce videos for them. So that's like kind of separate to the, it still runs through the same business, but it's just sec- separate income streams. Yeah. But the, like the YouTube revenue itself, it's such, like, you can see such exponential growth. And I yeah. see all the stories of people that do it. Yeah. And they go from earning, like, 1,000 to, like, 10,000 to, you know, hundreds of thousands within months. Like, not years, yeah. like, months. So we, there's, we got clients there's so much potential it. with it. We've got, obviously, you, but we've got, Yeah, you not know, quite that successful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, like, even, you know, one of our clients, and he's just, like, like 19 and just doing videos in his bedroom and earning a staggering amount of money mm. and you know it was it was his dad that contacted us originally and went think he needs to do a tax return <laughs> um he's earning loads of money off youtube and like he's like and you know me and his mum like we, he's earning more than both of us put together we're both teachers like <laughs> literally wow. like, and he's just like doing like, videos like, channel, yeah yeah and everyone. i'm like that's amazing like i love things like that i just yeah. love it so explain to me and the people watching what I don't understand about YouTube is this whole, you can have loads of subscribers, but maybe not earn much money, but you can have less subscribers and earn more money. Like, I don't understand that. So so for reference, I'm at about 7,000 subscribers-ish at the moment. Wow. And I'm roughly earning, not including like sponsorship stuff, about four and a half grand a month. I'm quite happy to talk about like figures and stuff of YouTube. Wow. So that is a tiny, tiny channel, but earns a significant amount based on the size of the channel. Luke, can we sort out the YouTube thing a bit quicker than we were? <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Get on that. But there are people out there that are, have like 40 or 50,000 subscribers <laughs> that have like nothing near that. Yeah. So there are so, huge channels. So there's there's a few things. And so my my pure YouTube like AdSense, because that's what you, you earn off of YouTube. Like people watch your videos, you then earn money off the ads that then run in front of the videos. Yes. And I think also the tech, the fact that you're what you're doing about is tech. People love that it on is. YouTube. Like people don't love accountancy. I don't know. I reckon you'd... <laughs> yeah, I reckon you do quite well on YouTube. We will see. We'll so see with, what with, happens. Um, I'll let so you know. With with pure YouTube, I'm earning like a thousand like pounds or dollars a month just off pure AdSense revenue. So that's just like the adverts running in front of it is just like about a grand. And right. that's that's the bit that varies a lot because between like finance videos perform really, really well from a monetary point of view because the people that will advertise on top of those videos are big finance companies that have right. a ton of money to spend. Whereas a gaming channel generally won't earn that much per video or per view because there's so many of them out there. Yep. Gaming companies might advertise and they're going to sell like a mouse or a keyboard. They're like more lower I'm value. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So it's just, you know, economies of scale. And I think I might be making it up. I'm pretty sure my, um, there's this RPM and CPM. So like cost per mil and something, something. Is, the RPM is basically what you get paid after YouTube take their cut. Right, okay. Um, so mine's like 15 to 20 pounds RPM, whereas some channels I've seen are like two or three pounds. RPM, so it's and it just depends on again on topics that you're making videos on. So what is that? They're taking that. They're taking two so or three pounds off of what? The, no, so the, the the CPM is the cost per mil. So I think it's like the the amount of money you get paid per like thousand views or something. Right. And then the RPM is the actual amount YouTube pay you because of after they've taken all their their cut and their money and all those kind of things. Right. Okay. So the RPM is the one that I care about because that's actually what ends up in my what bank you get. account. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the RPM, I've got a much higher RPM than a lot of other channels that have more subscribers, but they're doing the cheap cheaper content, so to speak. Right. And then the rest of the money then comes from uh, affiliate marketing. So it's, 
I, I've just yesterday I put out a video my my ultimate desk desk setup. This is like a stupid like keyword thing that yeah. like, every YouTuber has a desk setup video. Yeah. So a few people asked for it, so I made one. It's just like. Hey, this is my desk. This is the computer I use. Here's the monitor I use. Here's the little toy that sits on my desk. Here's the duck that's Here's on my desk. Duck. Those kind of things. Queen duck. <laughs> and all you then do is just link down below in the in the comments, um, like affiliate links to like Amazon links to go and buy them all. Uh, and okay. then people will go and watch the video. And then they go click, 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 buy, buy, buy. And then you get like a ti- like a tiny proportion. So how do people get affiliate links? So you can sign up to Amazon Associates. It's like the big one because everyone goes on Amazon. I have like. 15 Amazon accounts, okay. I think, because you have to sign up in every single country where there's an affiliate program. Right. Um, which is a real pain because you literally have to try and track it all. And they finally, they've, they're bringing it all into like the US page now. So you can go onto the US Amazon, click on reports, and it tries to like, collect all the income together. Okay. Um, but you sign up for every individual place. And then, so I use something called Genius Link, which is like $5 a month. It links into Amazon and then you create Genius Links to everything. And it means you can log into this one place and you can see how many clicks and all the wow. stats um, and even that when I was genius. a tiny tiny channel well it is yeah <laughs> even when I was a tiny channel I was still getting like thousands of clicks and I was like I didn't even, and this was like going from day day one of not using Genius Link to like let's turn it on and see what it's like oh we're getting thousands wow okay that's cool I should probably wow. try and monetize some of this yeah so it's just the rest of the income is just monetization on the, uh, the affiliate stuff cool so what would be your we'll, we'll round it up now and last question from me if we've got any questions um, from anyone listening no, we haven't. That's fine. <laughs> I will ask my final question. Um, oh, we haven't really checked on Instagram. But I don't know if you can see. I see people are joining um, still. Yeah, but... <laughs> I can still people joining. Um, ask questions. Any, if anyone's got any questions for Pete, um, then please ask them now and I will ask him for you. Um, but anyway, I was going to say, if someone was going to start out on YouTube or maybe got a channel with hardly any subscribers, what is your advice to them? If you're starting out, the easiest thing is just put out videos and it sounds like really stupid, but there are a lot of people that I talk to that like, oh, we're going to do video marketing. It's going to be amazing. We're going to do a YouTube channel. They bought all the gear. Like they even even spent like sometimes like a couple of grand or three grand or something on, on the kit. The and yet six months day. later, they still <laughs> haven't put anything out. Yeah. And it, it is a huge confidence thing. And I absolutely hated filming myself. I hated editing myself. But it was that, that thought that if I can just get over that, and just start doing this, then it can just take me to a, a, a different level and a different yeah. place. Yeah. And it has done, like undoubtedly. Yeah. So that's just the main thing. Just just get started just do and put it, stuff out. Literally. Yeah. And just do it. Don't worry too much about it being perfect and stuff. Just no. put it on. Oh, my first video, if you go and it's still up actually, my first video, um, which probably is a higher quality than some people's first videos because I oh, actually yeah. made an investment in yeah. kit and stuff. <laughs> and you know what you're doing. But um but like the audio was horrible. I sat in an office. You could hear it bouncing around the office. I had a TV with all my notes on that you could see in the reflection in the background because I had glass around me. So you could see me reading the notes. Um, it was just, yeah, it was horrendous. But again, you just try and improve on every video. So just make make the next video better than the, the last video. That's all you can really do. I like um, James Ashford, who is uh, owns Go Proposal, one of the software companies that I use. His, his phrase is, um, version one is better than version none. And I exactly. love that saying because it was the same for everything that we do. It's like, do you know what? Just put it out there. Don't worry about it. Like, I always say, like, could do better to everything, but I get in trouble sometimes. For like, what if the wife hears that? Like, no, yeah. it's fine. Don't worry. <laughs> She's fine. Definitely not. Everything else. <laughs> I can't see anything that's happening on Instagram. I don't know if... Um, What's the best kit to buy for a YouTube movie? Oh, we have a question. Right, hang Econ on. Tour. Sorry. Let's do that again. So... A question we have got from, yeah, from Geek on Tour um, is what's the best kit to buy for a YouTube newbie? That is a really good question. Thank you so much. Pete, over to you. So my go-to, if you, <laughs> affiliate marketing, <laughs> go to go to kit.co slash Pete Matheson. There's like pre-built kits that I've made um, oh. where you basically like, like, here's the basic YouTubers, newbies, like kit, they just buy it and what have you. But like a Sony, um, Sony ZV-1 or ZV-1 is like a 600 pound camera and it's still quite, pushing it for a lot of people but that's like yeah, but the youtuber's camera for, yeah it's um it's great it's a great all-around camera um great autofocus you can use it for vlogging which is when you're out and about or you can just sit up on a tripod and use it like these um but even to be honest like just the phone in your pocket like so many people say that and you go oh yeah right okay but actually it's all about the content you make not like the quality like get the audio right is the main thing I'd yeah say. You know, you luke's can watch always a pretty saying shoddy that video, luke is always saying that about the audio, the audio. Is wrong, then yeah. people just won't watch it yeah um and then you can fix the audio quality, the video quality later on. So get the audio and yeah. you can get like a, there's a Rode Video Micro, which I still use today. It's a tiny little mic that sits on top of the camera. It's like 20 quid, like really, really cheap. Get that, that fixes the audio problems. Do not use the inbuilt audio on any camera. 
apart from maybe your iPhone because that's all right. But any camera, inbuilt microphone, crap. Don't touch it. I mean, I did believe you, Luke, when you told me that over and over and over again. Because he was like, we need to get these mics and we've ordered these mics and stuff. And like, you can see we've got mic, mic, mics, there's mics everywhere. Um, but now you're saying it as well. So it reinforces that fact that, yeah. Because all you'd hear without the mics, you just hear it echoing around the room and it would sound yeah. crap. So I did try one, and edit that after, my God. I did one video on my <laughs> old iPhone, put it on LinkedIn. And my husband was literally like, you sound like you've recorded that on a potato. What are you doing? <laughs> like, take it down. And I was just like, it's not that bad. I listened to it. It was horrendous. Like, literally horrendous. <laughs> Um, cool. We'll take some more questions off anybody. Um, we've got one from oh Slim Boy Fat Seventy Three. Um, nice name. <laughs> great. Yeah. Um, good afternoon. Hi. How much investment is needed to start off with? Well, you did kind of just answer that, but if you could just sort of investment-wise, as much as nothing, because you've got it in your pocket if it's a phone, and then you can get some free video editing software. And like, twenty quid um, for a mic. Twenty quid for a mic. Um, DaVinci Resolve is like a professional level video editing software, but it's there's a free version, so you can use that to start off with. Amazing DaVinci Resolve people. And um, in terms of kind of getting started to like, you know, a good starting point, buy a camera, 600 quid, buy a microphone, 20 quid. Um, what else am I missing? What else do you need video gear wise? What do you need? What do you need? Like, uh, basic softbox light. Oh, a softbox, a light and a softbox. Uh, Godox SL60Ws, which you're using here as well. They're really we good, them. they're about 100 quid each. Um, <laughs> A softbox to go on the front of them, about fifty to hundred quid. Um, again, so that's maybe what a grand. So if we said, if we said, yeah. if you if you weren't going to do it on your phone and you genuinely wanted to actually start doing it properly with a camera and everything, if we say a grand, we'll get I, you. Set I would up. say push it up to fifteen hundred just to associate for like the little like tripod and little bits and screws and those kind of things that you yeah. need. But um, yeah, easily for fifteen hundred. So and then. Oh. Yeah, SD cards, yeah. SD cards, yeah. Um, and obviously factor in the fact that when you start earning money from these channels, you're going to need an accountant. So <laughs> just need to budget for that as well. Cool. It takes you a very long time. So the whole like, so with, with YouTube monetization, you need a hundred subscribers to be able to name your channel. You need a thousand subscribers to be able to monetize your content. And so monetization, I, I started off with, I think it was only about like a hundred pounds a month, but then about, I think it was like six or eight months later, we were already at like past a thousand. So it, it can scale up quite quickly, um, but you, yeah, it takes a while to earn anything. It sounds really silly, but I genuinely, I, I don't even care if it's a pound that I earn. <laughs> I literally just want to earn some money from YouTube just so I can say that, I've earned, <laughs> that is how sad I am. And I'm, I have no shame in admitting that. Absolutely no shame. Um, that's I've, it for now. That's it for now. Any questions on Facebook? Because I'm not, I can't see, but no. No, thank you for the people that have asked questions. And thank you so much, Pete, for being my first guest on, my, on my new podcast. You got me out of my house. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> um, so just to recap, follow pete matheson on youtube if you're not already because his channel is so so good and the advice and stuff he gives away is brilliant couple of slots left if any it companies out there want a fantastic coach be quick and also if you can hop on over to smooth accounting on youtube and follow us i'd really appreciate it so i can start earning a pound a month um, <laughs> <laughs> i need to buy food no i'm joking um I will be doing more of these podcasts. We've got some really fantastic guests coming up. Um, it'll be going on LinkedIn Live as soon as they let me have it, um, as well as Instagram and Facebook. And this recording will be put out on YouTube as well because I know there's a few people that have been messaging me saying they couldn't make it today, um, but they want to catch it, catch it later. So we'll absolutely be putting it out. Loads of snippets will be going out as well. So yeah, see everybody soon. And thank you so much. Thank Bye. you. Thanks, Pete. Bye. 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 <laughs>